Now, of course, we also need to have the technology in place to monitor what you are doing in your little neck of the woods mm -hmm. and what I am doing and what everybody else is doing. And then in that digital profile, you must have all the information that is available on that particular individual. Now, when you go into a, an app in, in the days that we are living in, and they ask you, what is your name? And you put your name into that little thing over there, then immediately pops up not only your name, but your ID number, your social security number, your telephone number, your domicile, where you are living, what your address is, what your physical address is. Do they have the data as to what religion you belong to? Yeah. Now, a few years ago, they had a census mm. in South Africa, and everybody had to take part in the census. So they came to my house, and they asked me to fill in the census form, which I did. And there was a category at the bottom which said religion. Mm. What religion do you belong to? So I put Christian. Mm. Okay. Then they came back to me and said, excuse me, you can't say Christian. You have to say what denomination mm. you belong mm. to. I said, why must I give my denomination? What has that got to do with you? What denomination I belong to? And in any case, people change denominations like shirts these days. Right. Not that I will, but uh, just for interest's sake, I asked them, why should I put in that? And they said, it is required. So I said, okay, now what do you do in the case of Muslims? What does it say there? Religion. It says Muslim. I said, but that's not fair. Is it a Shiite Muslim or is it a Sunni Muslim? Surely you should say what denomination he belongs to. <laughs> And if he doesn't have to, then neither do I. Yeah. Well. They were very upset with me, and they said that they would take further action. Uh, to date, they have not. Yeah. But the, the further action is actually quite unnecessary because they know what denomination you are of anyway. Exactly. No, it, it, you're ignorant if you think that you can hide. Even if you live remotely, don't think that they don't know where you are. They, they know. Do you know, Martin, I've often been asked this question. They know. So what, point is, what mm. point is there in doing this? I always say to myself and to others, you know what, when the real trouble begins, it'll be a time of trouble such as never was. They might be so busy that it'll take them a while to get to you, There's particularly if you're out of the way and it's a problem. Exactly. And there is God that can hide you in the cleft of the rock. I was living on this farm remotely. And uh, we had a farm in the Cape. And we were driving to the airport. I was going to fly away that day. So we drove quite a few kilometers, well over 200 kilometers. And I drove all along the back of the mountain through this remote area. And we saw a fire a mountain fire. Now, the thing to do in that area, if you have a fire, you're supposed to report it. So we got to the next town, which was about hmm, 150-odd kilometers from where I lived. And we walked in, and we said, we just want to report that we saw a fire. And they said, okay, uh, what is your name? And we gave our name, and... Just like that, they told me where I lived, yeah. everything about me. And I thought, how do these people know? A tiny little police yeah. station somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and they knew all of these things. Of course. I mean, we've got a company called TransUnion in South Africa, and there's, it's, we've mentioned this before, but that's got all your digital, now that, uh, digital information. That's linked to the government, to banks, to you know, the receiver of revenue, all of this, uh, the police, 